Hey folks, and um, welcome to another recorded video here at West Yorkshire Retro Gamer. Um, it's another Legion United video, and the European transfer window has now shut. And what I mean by that is that the Saudi clubs could still come in and bid for players, but hopefully. Hopefully none of this will affect Leeds United. So, I just thought I'd take a look at the uh, players that we've brought in. The players that we've let go. And what that means for the overall squad going forward. So, <coughs> let's start with the players that have come in. Um, Josh McDonald and Lewis Perry have come in from uh, Scotland. And um, are very much part of the youth setup uh, here at Leeds now. So, one's for the future. Uh, Ethan Ampadu was the first senior player to come in. Paid around £7 million. Um, defensive midfielder. Done well so far. Good sign. Um, Carl Dallow. Backup goalkeeper. Signed for around £400,000. Um, from Newcastle. Uh, Abdu was signed from Chelsea, by the way. Um, so, Dallo, um he's only played the cup games so far. Hasn't had a lot to do in either, really. Um, did make a bit of a silly error on the final penalty against Salford by coming off his line. Um, hasn't really. I mean, okay, so he's not had many opportunities yet, but he hasn't done enough to s suggest to me that he needs to play ahead of Ilan Millier yet. Time will tell. Sam Byron, um, signed on a free transfer. His last club was Norwich, uh, but he got released by them. Um, up until he got injured, looked good. Um, traditionally a right-back, but for Leeds, so far, has played left-back. Um, Joel Perot, possibly the... The big, you know, possibly the biggest signing of the bunch, um, ten million pound, that could rise, could rise up to around sixteen million. Um, striker, Dutch fella signed from Swansea. Um, proven goal scorer at this level. Approximately forty goals in eighty games. Um, it's a pretty good record. Um, Proves he knows where the net is. Um, that's his record in the championship, anyway. So yeah, no, I'm I'm very pleased with the signing of Joel Perry. Scored on his debut, and he'd only done one training session, you know, at that point. So uh, yeah, hopefully a lot to come from Joel this season. Um, Leah Gruev, um signed from Werder Bremen in Germany. Um, a Bulgarian international, 23 years old, defensive midfielder. Um, he's a new signing he's not played yet um, don't know much about the kid um, but reasonable pedigree from what from what I can tell um, he could be the most interesting signing of the bunch because he's probably out of the whole list he's probably the least known so uh, it'll be interesting to see how he adapts to English football uh, Glenn Cameron, um, 27 year old, signed from Rangers in Scotland. Um, defensive midfielder, Finnish international. Don't want to put a, I don't want to put a down on things, but one of the one of the lesser inspired signings, or you know, kind of less exciting signings, shall we say. Um, but when you consider that our defensive midfielders are all very young. Camera brings a little bit of experience to the game, so hopefully, um, hopefully ends up being a good signing. Um, and then the reason for that dotted line is that the ones above the dotted line are the permanent signings. The one underneath the line are loans. So we've made three loan signings. One of them is Joe Rodon, Welsh international, twenty-five now, I think. Um, in terms of age, um, reasonable pickup, 
um, has looked all right so far, and uh, he's a centre back uh, on loan from Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, another loan he's from Tottenham Hotspur is Jed Spence. Um, fairly proven at this level. Had a couple of good seasons in the Championship. Hasn't really done very much at Tottenham Hotspur. A friend of mine who is a Tottenham fan has said that he's a good player but has a bit of an edge to him. So he's going to have to prove, certainly to the Leeds fans, that this is maybe just because, you know, maybe it's down to him not getting games at Spurs or whatever the case. Um, but he comes to Leeds with a fresh clean slate, as far as I'm concerned. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll judge what his attitude's like. Um, but it's always interesting to hear these things from fans of other clubs, isn't it? Um, Spence, I believe, is 23. And, uh, you, you know, he's, he's got a bit to prove. So, you know, let's see how he does. And then the final one, done on deadline day, very late on, is Jaden Anthony. Not a player I know very much about. Um, 23-year-old. He's come on loan from Bournemouth. Uh, this was part of a swap deal for... Lewis Sinistera going out on loan to Bournemouth. Um, Anthony got a reasonable number of goal involvements in Bournemouth's promotion season um, and played every game. Uh, 30 odd starts with a few sub, you know, a few sub appearances. Um, so it would have been about. 21, 22 back then, so you know he's he's a young, relatively young player, but has a an all right amount of experience for his age. So let's see how he does. Um, again, another another side, a bit like Glenn Camera, that's maybe one that goes under the radar a little bit. You know, a, not a fantastically exciting signing, but you know, as every player that comes in at Leeds United, fresh clean slate. Um, and let's see if they can prove themselves to be worthy of wearing the you know the famous white kit. Um, plays on the wing, um, so he is, from a positional sense, a, a straight swap with Sinistera. So uh, um, you know, much needed cover um, on the basis that we have lost. Um, you know, quite. I mean, you know, we've lost quite a few. Um, players as you can see on the right hand side there. So that completes the number of players coming in. Um, let's have a look at the players that have gone out. So again same principle, the ones above the dotted line have gone out permanently, the ones below have gone out on loan. And I'll kind of describe the loan situation a little bit because it has been a complicated one this summer. So in terms of the permanents gone out, Tyler Roberts, uh, he has gone to Birmingham I think it feels that long ago that Robert's left now <laughs> um, <clears throat> he he struggled with injuries in his time at Leeds um, wasn't super prolific he was a relatively young player at Leeds early 20s um, I just felt he struggled a bit and his injuries didn't help nothing against the kid um, but definitely right to move him on. Uh, Alfie McCalman, uh, I think, is it Carlisle he's gone to? Something like that, anyway. Um, he's, uh, he's a player that came through the youth ranks as Alfie. Always showed a little bit of promise. Northern Ireland International. Roberts is a Welsh international as well, let's not forget that. Um, but, yeah, just one that n never quite made the grade. Um, you know, he's, he's a tidy midfielder for maybe League One or something like that, is Alfie. Um, but, you know, whether he'll progress to be anything better than that, only time will tell. But he's, he's, he's young enough. You know, he'll, he'll carve a solid career out for himself, I'm sure. And the fact that he's already internationally recognised by his country. Yeah, you know, all the best to Alfie. Uh, ben Andrucci um, did very well for Leeds United under 18s. Um, but just was never really seen as someone that could then step it up to the under-21s. Um, so, you know, he's 
so he has been let go to I think maybe Bolton or something like that but again he'll be there on a youth contract or certainly on an under 21's contract and you know he, he can try and carve a career out for himself still very young is, is, is Andrew she's still only about 18 so you know plenty of time for him similar thing can be said about Wilbrook goalkeeper um, still a teenager himself um, again did quite well for the under 18s but never really you know he could never really get himself past Harry Christie um, who is you know now featuring regular regularly in the Leeds under 21s so um, again nothing against the kid he'll do alright I'm sure uh, Jay Buchan another young player midfielder um, again just same with Brooke and Andrew, she really just seem to be, you know, decent kids, but not likely to make the grade um, at the kind of pace that the, the squad is, or the, the management is obviously wanting. So, you know, the, these kids have been given an opportunity to, you know, to show their skills elsewhere. Uh, and I'm for sure, this was a player I really wanted to keep. Leeds did offer him a contract, but I think that the contract that he's picked up at Norwich uh, on a free transfer. Um, is probably a more standard regular contract. I think the one that Leeds offered him was possibly something like a pay as you play deal or a deal on reduced wages. Um, a very tidy pickup for Norwich, I think. If they can keep him fit, that's a good midfielder that they've just signed there. Um, but can they keep him fit? That is the question. I think Forshaw would have fit into. Um, you know, into this Leeds team very well. Um, might have meant that we maybe didn't need to sign quite so many midfielders, but you know, it's uh, it is what it is. Forshaw's got to do what's right for him. So, you know, um, when he's played for Leeds, he's done well. So I I don't hold any animosity to Forshaw for leaving. Um, yeah, wish him all the best. Um, Stuart McKinstry, he's been released and hasn't found a club yet, which is very surprising. I thought he might have gone back, you know, back to his home club, uh, Motherwell, um, you know, which is where we signed him from in the first place. Um, he had a loan spell with Motherwell as well. Um, I'm sure that Stuart will find another club at some point. As far as I know, he hasn't signed with anyone yet. Um, young player, about 21 years old, looked all right. Looked all right when he played for Leeds, you know, nothing overly spectacular, but certainly in the under twenty ones looked very good. And I think you know, if he was to get a move up to Scotland, I think he could get a move to a Scottish Premier League or Scottish Championship team. He could certainly be a regular in the Scottish Championship. I think if the Scottish Championship team snapped him up, I think he could play regular there uh, and do very well. Um, Joe Rubbles, uh, I believe, has gone to the Saudi League. Um, he was also a player a bit like Forshaw where the contract ran out and um, uh, Joel has decided to, uh, to pick up a nice healthy contract over in, in the Saudi League so fair enough to him never you know he, he was brought in as a backup and to help the young goalkeepers that we've got at the club and you know he's, he's been replaced by Carl Dallow now so nothing against Joel uh, he, he, he tried his best in the games that he got which wasn't many um, but yeah nothing against the guy um, and he's, he's doing what's right for, for him and his family by getting a very healthy payout you know he might he might only have a couple more years left in him so why not uh, Rodrigo Moreno has done a very similar thing He's which is surprising because Rodrigo was just about getting himself back into the Spain squad and I think now he has probably called time on that by opting to go and play in Qatar um, which again is probably going to be of a similar kind of contract to what these players are getting in the Saudi League um, so it did surprise me a little bit that I thought he might have gotten a move back to La Liga um, you know, to really give himself a good chance of getting into the Spain squad again but apparently not that's up to him of course um, Owen Bray uh, young lad again like Andrucci and Brook and Bucken, um, you know, just just released after, you know, after playing in the youth team. Um, okay, you know, it'll probably get him, you know, 
wouldn't surprise me if he gets you know gets a career maybe in League 2 or something like that I mean it's so hard to tell when they're that young isn't it but uh, yeah he, he looked okay without being spectacular so fair play to him and then Tyler Adams um, certainly the most valuable um, of the sales that we've made there over £20 million pounds. sold to Bournemouth a bit of an uninspiring move I would have thought personally he's moved there solely for Premier League games and nothing else there's no way that there's anything particularly inspiring about joining a club like Bournemouth no disrespect to them but Bournemouth will never be a bigger club than Leeds United um, the only thing that Bournemouth have over Leeds at the moment is Premier League football and that's got to be the motivation as to why Tyler Adams has gone there he actually he's still injured as far as I know so yeah that, that's that really so by selling Tyler it has allowed us to bring in some much needed money which has allowed us to make some of the signings that we've made on the left hand side there um, in terms of the you know, the values I don't know if I touched on the values of, of Grueb and Kamara they were both about 5 million each there or thereabouts so with the signings of them the 10 million up to 16 million for Perot um, and then the 7 million for Ampadu has basically all been covered by um, the sale of Tyler Adams there are thereabouts anyway um, with small you know sm far smaller fees coming in for Tyler Roberts and also um, uh, Rodrigo Moreno so moving on to these loans now this is where it gets a little bit salty um, and for about three quarters of this loan list of players that have gone out I would be amazed if they get welcomed back certainly by the fans um, the club might bring them back at the end of their loan periods but I can tell you now some of these they are going to get a frosty reception if they play in the league shirt again Robin Cock being the first He's gone on loan to Germany and I can't remember which club. I don't care. Personally. Diego Laurenti on loan to Roma. Aronson on loan to Union Berlin. Christensen on loan to Roma. Uh, Rocker. Now, I don't know whether Rocker has been loaned out or if he has actually been I don't know if they've made the signing permanent I think he's gone to Betis I think Cox has gone to Freiburg or Frankfurt one of the two I think and I could be totally wrong on that one um, well yeah Rock has gone to Betis Verber has gone to Hoffenheim I think something like that Um, I mean again I, I really couldn't care <laughs> you know um, Jack Harrison has gone on loan to Everton which again is a very un it's, it's a bit like the whole transfer of Tyler Adams to Bournemouth you know going to Everton is not very inspiring with the way that they're playing at the moment there's every chance Everton could be relegated it gets Jack Premier League football and it gets Jack a, a slim possibility of getting in the England squad again unlikely forever playing forever and he'd need to be playing with a top half team really um, out of that list up to this point Jack is one that he's probably the only one that I would welcome back into the Leeds team next season if we get promoted possibly and, I say, and I, I say that solely on the basis of the service that Jack has given us since he's joined us he's worked his backside off he's played some very good games had some very decent moments um, of goals and assists um, and has always seemed a relatively good lad um, so I would, I would possibly welcome Jack back all of those above him in that loan list not a chance 
at all. Uh, Sonny Perkins has gone on loan, I think, to Oxford. This will be just to get some first team experience. Um, he's still young as Perkins. This is a good opportunity for him. Lewis Bate did the same thing last season. He went on loan to Oxford. Now it's the turn of Sonny Perkins. Uh, Sam Greenwood's gone on loan to uh, Middlesbrough. And again, that's again just so that he gets game time. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see Perkins and Greenwood come back. That wouldn't be a problem. Cody Dramme has gone on loan to Birmingham. He's in his last year of his contract at Leeds and I'm so glad to see the back of him. I'm, I'm just going to throw that out there now. I don't care. Dramme to me is as is, is, is much a bad an influence as those ones that were mentioned earlier on. Um, so I'm glad to see the back of him. And then Lewis Sinistera. I'm, I'm angry with this one because he... If the rumours are true, he rumoured to start taking legal action again, like what was going on um, in uh, you know with it, with his contract previously. It looked as if everything had been ironed out, and then all of a sudden, Bournemouth come in with a late bid. And again, where's the ambition, you know, in terms of joining a club like Bournemouth? Uh, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but they're not. You know, they're not a big club. They've got Premier League football, that doesn't mean they're a big club. Yeah, so he's he's gone there solely for the solely for the Premier League football and nothing else. And and what's disgusting is what has come out this morning from Lewis Sinistera's agent. Well the agent can just I I'm not even gonna go into it. I'll I'll be swearing my head off and yeah, just scum. That's polite. So, anyway. Um, so, with all that being said, out of those loans, the only ones I'd welcome back are Jack Harrison, Sonny Perkins and Sam Greenwood. There is every possibility they may come back to Leeds, you know, if we get promoted, you know, certainly there's, there's every chance he'll come back if we don't I would imagine that Jack will probably look to be sold because he'll want to continue playing Premier League football um, Sonny Perkins and Sam Greenwood might have a chance to come back as hopefully as better players if they've gained some experience and they might be able to push them their way into the squad and aside from anything else if we did get promoted out of that list which players could do a good job for Leeds. Jack Harrison is probably the only one, with maybe the exception of Sinistera, but you know, Sinistera's attitude is obviously shown, you know, equal to his agent. Um, and uh, again, at a squeeze, maybe Max Berber. But the rest haven't proved anything in a Leeds shirt. So, you know, we see the back of them. That, that that's how it goes. You know, we're, we're not we're not a charity club. You know what I mean? We need people that want to be at Leeds United. So there we go. Right. So then on to um, on to how the squad looks, and you can see it's a it's a fairly stacked squad. There's a lot of players there, um, but you know, despite that. Um, you know, when you're doing a 46 game season, you're always going to need that depth. So, what have we got? Good depth in goalkeeping department. Not worried about that. They're all staying now, unless the sound is Raiders. That goes for any of these players here. Um, I'm glad we've kept Dylan. I think he'll be a very good goalkeeper. So, I'm, I'm glad we've kept him. Darlow, suitable backup. Class and suitable backup. Van den Uvel, I I mean. He's got a squad number, that's the only reason he's in this list. Um, I don't personally think that Danny's going to get any game time in the first team this season. Um, he's, he's clearly fourth choice at this moment and that's not going to change. Uh, defenders. Um, Luke Ayling, Sam Byram, Jed Spence. I've put Stuart Dallas as a fullback. Um, but I mean, can play just about pretty much anywhere, can't he? Let's face it. Um, 
Bar goalkeeper and striker. I'd say they're, they're about the only two positions. Oh, and, and centre back. But he but can play pretty much anywhere else. Um, Junior Firpo, still at the club, which was a surprise based solely on the fact that I thought he would probably have gone but his injury problems have prevented a move out I think if he'd been fit I think we would have got rid of Furpo and I think we would have brought in someone like Charlie Taylor That's, I'm just throwing that out there but he's still here so let's see what Daniel Farker can do with him when he gets fit um, centre back Liam Cooper Pascal Strout, Joe Roden Charlie Cresswell I've put Leo Hilda as a, as a centre back. I, I don't see him as a left back, even though he has played a couple of games at left back. He's far more comfortable at centre back. It's the same similar kind of thing with Pascal Stram. You know, he played nearly a whole season at left back and proved that he was not a left back. He's a centre back. It's simple as. Uh, and then Chris Moore and Diogo Montero, who have got squad numbers, but again, I don't see either of those really featuring this season. There's too much competition ahead of him. Uh, moving on to uh, the midfielders, um, Ethan Ampadu, um, Jamie Shackleton, who I've put as a, a midfielder, but I mean, he's, he's like the new Dallas in terms of his versatility, he'll, he'll play anywhere. Uh, Adjie Gray, uh, Ilya Gruev, uh, Glenn Camera, Darko Jerby, Lewis Bay. Um, I've Included JB and Bay, but again, I, I feel that those two are going to struggle. They've got a 17 year old that's ahead of them. JB is 19 and, and Bay is 20. Those two have got a lot to to do to push their way into the team. So, you know, and, and obviously with the signings of Grew and Camera, how much game time are, are those young lads going to get? Not much. So they they may feature more in the in the under twenty ones, um, but again, you know, it could be the time that they need to get loan moves, and and there is the loan market is still available um, for young players. Um, so you know, let's let's see what happens with those. Uh, on the wings, Wilfred Nonto has stayed as the club said they, that he would um, now it's down to Wilfred to get his head down win back the fans he made a start of that by getting a goal against Ipswich he needs to keep that kind of form up now he needs to show that he really wants to be at Leeds um, with the exit of um, Sinistera um, this could open the door for the likes of Crescentio Somerville and Ian Pervera Daniel James featured until he got injured as well, but that was in a period where we did not have Nonto or Sinister available. Uh, and Jaden Anthony has come in to plug the gap um, left by Sinister. Um, and then up front, so number nine and number ten, um, we've got the likes of Patrick Bamford, who once he gets back fit, still a good player to have at this level. Joel Perot. I hope Perot absolutely rips this division, you know, to shreds, and he and he's got the capability to do so. You know, he's proved it in the last two seasons with Swansea. Imagine what he can do with better players around him. Which, you know, I feel that this squad is better than what he's ever had at Swansea. So, you know, excited to see what what Joel can do. Definitely, um, Joe Gala. Obviously, you know, likes to play number ten. Um, I've always had a thing like with Joe Gallagher and, and Sam Greenwood. You know, I've always kind of thought that you know they could do something good at Leeds. It's just not quite happened for Joe yet. Hopefully, hopefully he can do enough to to show that he that he merits a place in the team this season. Um, Jorginho Rutter, he stayed despite some late rumored interest um, from a couple of clubs abroad. Uh, and then Matteo Joseph, who has stayed. Um, could have had a loan spell like Sonny Perkins, but he has just come back from an injury, so I think that's probably the reason why uh, Matteo Joseph has not had a loan uh, deal put in place for him just now, um, to gain some further experience. Uh, but as I say, the loan, the loan market is still available. So, there we go. Uh, overall, I think we could have done with a left back but Daniel Farker has said that he's happy with the cover that we've got at fullback now. Um, 
and you'd think that in theory a right back could cover left back and vice versa so in theory there are enough full backs at the club um, and Jamie Shackleton who as I've said is is a midfielder can cover full back and do a good job to be fair so maybe there is enough cover only time will tell on that one um, we are stacked in midfield now we've kind of gone from having virtually no midfield depth to having almost too much um, but over a 46 game season you know having a good engine room is there's certainly no harm in that um, still got some good stuff on the wings maybe lack a number 10 you know the, 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 the number 10 role it's one of those where you know is it a second striker or is it an attacking midfielder? You know, it, it, there's a big debate on that, and and it's like, you know, can you know are there players that can do either? I mean, you know, Pablo Hernandez, you know, when he played as a ten, he was an attacking midfielder. He wasn't really seen as a second striker. Um, you know, he really was a, a creative attacking midfielder. But then you've got players like, you know, Joe Gallagher and, and Jorginho Rutter and maybe even Joel Perot, depending on how they want to play, um, that, you know, are more striker based rather than attacking midfield based. So really depends on who adapts to the position, I guess, and this is all you know, this is down to the coaching that Daniel Farker and his coaching team are gonna do now, isn't it? They've got to find out the best positions for each of these players. And, and just make sure that they pick the ones that are the, are the most hungry to play every week and give everything for that shirt and, and this is something that Daniel has mentioned in his conferences up to now he's talked about needing players that are, that are going to fight for that shirt and, and play for the badge you know, and, and, and he, he won't accept anything less that, that is you know 100% certain you know, based on what he's saying, you know, let, let's hope it's not just words. You know, any, any of these players and managers and coaches can say whatever they like. What the fans want to see is what happens on that pitch. You know, so this this is where it's at for me. Um, so yeah, you know, I think we've assembled a good squad here, uh, and certainly one that you know I feel more confident now that we can now push for promotion. Now that we've filled in some of the gaps, now that we've brought in some quality. Um, and that we've still kept some decent players as well. I think this squad is is good enough. I was worried. I have to say, I was I was worried that we didn't have enough quality. Um, but you know, more more action has happened in this last fortnight in terms of transfers than what had happened for the previous six weeks. Um, so you know, it's it's good. You know, I I, I feel that the squad is healthier now in terms of numbers. And, and there's some good quality there so now it's down to these boys to do what they can on the pitch can they deliver I think Joel Perot is a great signing I really really highly rate this signing it's not taking a risk with Perot two seasons of scoring around 20 goals uh, each is, is, is a very good return and also proof that he can play in this division and do well That that's key for me um, and I know he's the most expensive signing but he's, 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 he's got to go down as the best signing that we've got out of this bunch um, Ampadu looks like a savvy pickup. you know again a lot of money spent on him but has played very well up to now um, I do like the fact as well that most of our signings have actually been um, you know British or Irish not too many foreigners in there you know I do like that um, but again, nothing, nothing against the foreign players that we put at the squad. I'd say Perot's Dutch. I mean, you know, it doesn't really doesn't bother me um, in the sense. I just don't want us to become a club that goes completely reliant on foreign players. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you look at that squad now. Looks like a you know looks like a proper championship squad now. One that can you know proper top six, proper top six club. Uh, or squad I should say um, so uh, let's see how they do 
Well, there we have it, folks. Um, that's my little review on how the squad looks now that the transfer window is shut predominantly. Um, let's see how they do. Let's, we've got a game against Sheffield Wednesday um, uh, in just an hour's time. So, uh, as of time of recording. So, um, best of luck to all the lads that represent Leeds United this season. Um, do please give the video a like and do please subscribe to the channel uh, for more football and video game content and maybe some other subjects and topics that come up in the in, in the channel uh, as, we, as we go along as, as we try to grow the channel as much as possible um, so yeah just just keep an eye out for everything that come that comes along do please hit the, the notify bell as well so that you don't miss any future streams or any future videos um, going to be a lot of content coming up uh, certainly live streams uh, there's a few comp few gaming competitions that I'm involved in um, it's going to happen over these next few weeks and months uh, it's going to be good fun so with that in mind um, thanks for watching and see you in the next one bye bye